NASA has a warning for people who want to get a closer look at next month's total solar eclipse. Make sure you have the proper eye protection, like the eclipse glasses. And as you look at the heavens on April the 8th, when the eclipse starts, please, please put those glasses on. This could end up being one of the most watched solar eclipses ever, with more than 31 million people living in its path. That path covers 15 states from Texas to Maine. The FAA is predicting peak travel records starting today through next week. But it's not just traditional spring break vacations crowding the skies. A significant number of people are also traveling to catch a better glimpse of the total solar eclipse. According to NASA, more than 31 million people live in the 200-mile path where the phenomenon will be visible on April 8th. Joining me now to discuss is Marissa Garcia. She is an aviation journalist and senior contributor at Forbes. Great to have you with us. Um, I want to start with asking you, how much all this excitement around the eclipse could really disrupt or impact travel? Well, it, it will be significant because there are going to be a lot of aircraft flying. The FAA expects over 57,000 flights that day. Um, it's very exciting, of course. It's an event that takes place um, very rarely. It's been seven years. So it's understandable a lot of people want to get out there and see it in person. Um, but that means that um, parking lots will be pretty busy uh, at the airports as um, people will also be going to the airports to see it. Um, it's going to be hectic, but fun. Yeah, and I want to ask you, Marissa, as well about the path here, because uh, it is about 200 miles. So walk us through the hot spots. Where will people actually be headed? Well, it, it will start with uh, San Antonio, Texas, at, um, and then it will be heading north, um, northeast. Um, but the big hotspot will be that it will also be falling on Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, which is American Airlines' hub. Mm. So that will be a big disruption. Um, it won't last very long wherever it is. Uh, it is it, In total, it's one hour and 10 minutes of event. Um, but it's going to still, you know, I'll have a lot of pilots as well that are going to be flying private um, to airports along the way. So it'll be busy. And Marissa, how can people prepare? What's the best way to try to avoid a travel disruption? Well, they may not be able to avoid a travel disruption. That's going to be <laughs> up to the FAA's best efforts. But the best thing that people can do is just pack their patients. Um, you know, go with, with the mindset that it's going to be busy and try to travel uh, pack light, pack carefully. Don't take any prohibited items with you in your bag so you don't have a problem uh, trying to clear uh, security. And uh, just behave <laughs> you know be uh, patient and, and pleasant with everyone because everyone's going to be under a lot of stress mm. and uh, and the fa is going to be very weary of uh passengers being disruptive yeah some good reminders there marissa garcia thank you thank you on april 8th a rare event will occur in the sky some parts of the u.s will witness a total eclipse while others will see a partial eclipse now to view it, you must wear proper eyewear, but experts also warn fakes are now hitting the market and they could damage your eyes. Danya Backus visited a legitimate manufacturer and has some tips for us on how to make sure your glasses are safe. And then Chloe's putting together our pillow box product. It's a busy time at Rainbow Symphony in Los Angeles. Mark Margolis' company is shipping out glasses for the solar eclipse. That's a couple of weeks away, but he's been making glasses for two years. How many glasses have you produced over, what, the last two years? Two years. Really, tens of millions of pairs, yeah. His glasses are made in the U.S., come with an ISO seal, and are certified with the number 12312-2. However, experts are warning that foreign companies are making fakes. The American Astronomical Society says one or more unidentified factories in China are now producing counterfeit eclipse glasses. This counterfeit pair looks very similar to the real thing, and on the inside, it even has the correct number in the name of a legitimate American manufacturer. We know that there are counterfeits, which may or may not be safe, and we know that there are fakes, which I define as being unsafe. So how do you know if your glasses are safe? 
NASA offers this advice. Take your eclipse glasses and find a bright light, like a lamp or a flashlight. Hold your eclipse glasses up to the light and look through them. The light will appear extremely dim or not appear at all when looking through the glasses. Eclipse glasses are at least a thousand times darker than the very darkest ordinary sunglasses. On its website, the American Astronomical Society lists authorized dealers that sell safe glasses. We've been working long hours during the week and then also on weekends. Margolis says supplies are going quickly, so shoppers might want to buy soon before the glasses, like the sun, disappear. Danya Back is CBS News, Los Angeles. More than one million people are expected to visit Niagara Falls April 8th to watch the total solar eclipse. It's creating a tourism boom at the wonder of the world, which typically gets 13 million visitors per year. Visitors are paying as much as $1,600 for a hotel room and $4,000 for vintage train rides, offering one of the best views of the spectacle. The waterfalls, which are located on the U.S. border with Canada, fall in the path of totality for the eclipse, meaning visitors will see the moon completely block out the sun. Mark it on your calendars. We are now two weeks away from the total solar eclipse on April 8th. And historically speaking, knowing the date of an eclipse has been life-saving information. Christopher Columbus predicted one in 1504 when he was marooned in Jamaica. It made Columbus look so powerful to islanders, goes the story, that they didn't kill him. An eclipse in 1919 also changed the course of history when scientists used the event to observe how the sun's gravity bends starlight, proving Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. These eclipses happen because of a remarkable coincidence in our solar system. The sun is 400 times the diameter of the moon and sits 400 times farther from the earth, making the two appear to be the same size in the sky when the moon passes over. On April 8th, darkness will fall in the afternoon for three to five minutes in much of the United States. Time is running out to make plans for the best place to experience it. A total eclipse occurs when the moon completely blocks the sun. More than 20 million Americans actually traveled for it the last time in August 2017. The so-called path of totality, where you can actually see the full eclipse, is only 115 miles wide. It will move northeast, heading from Texas all the way to Maine. Associate Editorial Director of Travel and Leisure, Alicia Prakash, is here in Studio 57 to help us get ready. So, Alicia, talk to us about where you're going to watch this, and if you could view it from anywhere in the world, where would you choose? Sure. So, I'm going to be seeing it at, at Fredericksburg, Texas, but one of the best places to see it is in Niagara Falls. At Niagara mm. Falls, you'll be able to check off two items from your wish list by experiencing the falls and seeing the eclipse. Um, at Niagara Falls State Park, you'll have unobstructed views of the eclipse, which is expected to last roughly three and a half minutes here. Uh, starting in early April, NASA scientists will also be hosting educational events, programming throughout the area. So lots to do before and after the eclipse. Um, and while tickets are not needed for the general viewing areas, it's highly recommended that you book your hotels in advance. You know, the destination is expecting hundreds of thousands of visitors for the event. So you're definitely going to want to snag those accommodations quickly. And luckily, there are a lot of properties and rooms still available. I remember the last solar eclipse and what a big deal it was, how everybody um, had their special glasses or their special viewing boxes. Uh, but I remember it only lasted for a very short period of time. And the parties on either end of it were really more of what, what it was about. So um, do you have any suggestions about places you may want to go to take full advantage of the scene? Sure. So Cleveland in Ohio, uh, we at Travel and Leisure just named this destination one of the best places to visit in 2024. And for great reason. You know, Lake Erie here is a great place to bring the whole family for unobstructed views of the eclipse which is expected to last nearly four minutes. Um, in fact, NASA scientists are predicting that the lakefront location will actually keep the clouds away for optimal viewing conditions. Uh, there's also great kid-friendly programming at places like the Great Lakes Science Center, um, as well as the Cleveland Museum of Arts, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 
Uh, one fun fact, though, is the Cleveland Guardians, their opening day is actually on the same day as the Eclipse. So you're going to want to make sure Ooh, to get auspicious. tickets for that as well. <laughs> yes. Um, one of my other favorite destinations that I do want to mention, though, is Dallas, Texas for the Eclipse. You know, not only is the weather great this time of year, but the city will have uh, about four minutes of totality, making it one of the longest periods of darkness for the eclipse this year. Um, and that's just on top of, you know, fun, amazing things to do in the city. There's world-class museums, art galleries. Uh, sports fans will appreciate that it's home to the Dallas Mavericks. Sounds like a good excuse to book a little vacation for yourself. Sure. But this is going to be a busy time anyway because it's during spring break for a lot of college students. Do you expect the prices are going to be pretty high then? Yes. Yeah, so prices will be high. So you are going to want to book your hotels as soon as possible. You know, some properties have a two to three night minimum. So keep an eye out for that as well to make sure it suits your travel plans. Um, you're also going to want to make sure you keep time zone changes in check, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a shame? I know. Pat, the totality only lasts a few minutes, so it would be such a shame if you missed it because of a time zone change. Um, and then last but not least, like you said, you're going to want to make sure you have those special eclipse glasses. You know, you don't want to injure your eyes uh, when you're looking up at the sky, so make sure you snag a pair of those, too. All great suggestions, Alicia Prakash. Thank you. And if you want more great suggestions, Travel and Leisure's March issue is out now. You can find out more about their recommendations for eclipse travel plans on their website as well.